Okay, now it's time to make a rib sandwich. Not like the ones that sell at uh, Bodacious or anything like that, but a rib sandwich here using our sheet metal. I have the rudder form block here that we made. This is the top. And if you remember, we have the sheet metal that I just cut out and it's labeled top. And I haven't done anything to it at all since I used on the shear. It's got the rolled edge on that one side and that's exactly what I want, so I'll just lay that on the top. And then here is the rudder backup block. And I look to make sure that the rudder, that the pins are, uh, or I should say the arrows are pointing towards each other so I have the proper orientation. And these are just 3 16 inch basically steel dowels. They're nothing more, I don't know, they look like about an inch and a half long right about there. Uh, I just had that rod stock just lying around so I just took, cut a couple chunks, put that in there, and go ahead and line up the, the blank, which it lines up fine, and then I go ahead and push that in through the rudder and I've got a rib sandwich. Do this on this side as well. That's all we have. You can see that it's ready for forming. Now in my vise, I took the regular jaws out of the vise and I went ahead and replaced them with oak jaws. And I did that for the main reason of not tearing up the form block. These jaws, if you have any kind of vise at all, they have some real aggressive serrations on the faces to grip whatever you're going to have be putting into the vise. Well, if you put in oak in that, it's just going to end up just completely tearing the wood apart. So I went ahead and just got some scrap pieces of oak, cut them, and just uh, chamfered a couple holes and went ahead and made some oak jaws for my, for my vise and it worked good. So I'm going to start on this end, on the long end, and go ahead and clamp it in there. And notice I'm clamping it right on the edge nice and tight. And here's my two favorite hammers for working with the metal. My little mini sledge and my uh, dead blow hammer. My dead blow hammer I'm going to use just for initial rolling the edge over and then my ball peen hammer which is actually looks like a mini sledge, a tiny hammer. It's my favorite hammer no doubt. But I really polish this surface to a really nice smooth surface because as I'm hammering and I'll show you later you don't want it to telegraph any imperfections from the hammer face onto the metal. So what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to go ahead and just start laying the metal over. You have to make sure that as you're laying the metal over, you just work it over easy. And the reason for that is, if you're working the edge over and you have this one laid over all the way and you keep on doing that, there's a little bit of a shear action that happens as you're going along. That little web in there stretches. This is going to stretch anyway, but you want to minimize that. And if you do that and really lay it over really hard each time, it's going to stretch that edge. And pretty soon this thing's really going to be looking like a banana. You want to avoid that. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and just start laying it over just a little bit. See, it doesn't take much. Take it and move it. to here, I'm going to start at the tip and then start moving forward. So now you get the idea how to work that over. The reason why I started at the tip here once I got to this point is because this rolls over a lot on this area, obviously where the, where the maximum amount of curve is into the airfoil shape. And I want to make sure that it doesn't keep on stretching all the way to the end and really making a bow at the end. So I started on this side and working my way towards the middle. That way anything that gets stretched can be gathered back in the middle of the, of the uh, shape of the rib. 
Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and start working my way back and forth and then I'll flip it around and then I'll start working the other edge the other way and then I'll start working with the hammer once I get it all the way flipped over. Okay, you can see I've worked it back and forth about four or five times now. I'm on my last pass. You can see that it's got a few weights here up front. I'll be taking those out. And here's where you can really start whacking it with a soft blow hammer. But if you notice when I pull it apart, look at what's going on right now. It's got a banana shape to it. And that's what it's going to be until we fix that with some flutes. But the next step now is to take the soft blow hammer, keeping the, the form blocks together, and just really... You can work as much as you can out with the soft blow. But don't get too upset. We have our little, our little ball peen hammer waiting in the wings to take care of anything else. So if you look, I'll finish working along the edge or along the bottom. If you see here on this side, there's not much a wave to it because it's a straight uh, fold over. You go up here where the bend radius is a lot tighter, you can see it's got some waves working on here. And we're going to eliminate those here in a second. I've got it pretty much uh, done on this side. I'm going to go ahead and start working with a soft blow hammer on this edge. Okay, I worked about as much as I can with the soft blow hammer. If you look at the edge, they've got, got a few scallops on each side. Pretty much scallop free on the back side. You can see also it does have a banana shape, but that's okay. We'll take care of that later. Now it's time to start working with the ball peen hammer. You can use any hammer you like. I personally really like this little hammer only because it has a lot of mass to it so you don't have to hit it too hard and also is able to polish the face. Now why would I not use this for rolling over the edge immediately as well? If you're hitting on the edge it's really easy to catch the edge of the metal with the edge of the hammer. So you'll end up with little smileys all along here if you use this to begin with. That's why I started with the dead blow hammer. Now that I've got it flat, I can go ahead and start working this flange down. You can see it rebounds a little bit. And the reason for that is because that metal is not on the flat on the form block. There's some spring back there. Since this is 90 degrees, I didn't put any re relief on here. I'm just going to go ahead and work this back and forth until it's flat up against the form block. What's going on is, let's say here's the form block here, and here's the metal. As it folds over, you can see there's a gap. It doesn't, with the dead blow hammer, it doesn't flatten all the way against the form block. So if you exaggerate it a little bit, it's kind of like a little hump. What I'm going to do now is take the uh, take the ball peen hammer and just make it flat right along that radius and along the top of the form block. And that should work all this stuff out. I shouldn't say should, it will. The only thing is when you get to the front edge again, you're going to end up shrinking actually that little cord, this little area right here. And by shrinking what I mean is that uh, they do this in aluminum forming, it's called uh, gathering the ruffles. What they'll do is they'll take on each end, they'll kind of work it, and then there'll be these little scallops that happen. Well, you can, metals, you can flow form metal. And that's basically what we're doing here is we're using the edge of the form block here. You can see I'm not hitting very hard, but it's just the mass of the hammer that brings that down and that flattened that out really nice. Then I'll work out here on the tip and I'll start and just keep on working my way towards the middle and these ruffles will disappear. Just have to be patient but they will end up flow forming into each other and then when you hear that you know that the metal is flat up against the form block and there's no spring back. 
Again, like I said, whatever hammer you use, if it's a body hammer or whatever, make sure that you have a slight convex surface on here so you're not putting smileys in. And make sure it's smooth because any imperfections that you have on this hammer will telegraph through to the metal underneath and you don't want a bunch of uh, little divots and little um, um, marks in the metal. You may or may not get some, but they'll usually be very shallow. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. One other thing I forgot to mention as you're uh, using the ball peen hammer, since it does have a little bit more mass, it's going to tend to drive this whole assembly down. Uh, the jaws, you, you can get them tight, but don't get them too tight. What I did was I've got a little block of wood here that I put in just to keep the form block from going down uh, further into the jaws of the vise. It helps support it. This is cut down a little bit. I've got a little bit bigger block for when I do uh, thinner ribs, but that's it. And then when you're doing this edge, it's almost like planishing on this edge. You can take whenever you're using your hammer, make sure you have good control of it. But you can also use strokes like this to help planish it and to bring the metal in. And I'll show you here what I'm talking about. You can see there's a little bit of ruffle here that I'm working out just slowly but surely. very nice, very nice and smooth, and it's uh, basically ready, this one little area. I still have to work my way down to the end of the rib and also on the back side, but that's basically how you do it with the hammer. Just have good control. I don't, I don't sit here in the back and whack it because I don't, I tend to wiggle it. I mean, this thing's pretty heavy. I'll take and just grip it like this. I guess you could use even a body dolly for this, for that matter. But you can see all the strokes that I'm using, it's a glancing blow. That way, another good part about that is if, if I don't hit it right on like that, I won't end up putting a little smiley in the rib. There you go. A lot more work to go. Okay, here we are quite a number of minutes later, but um, it's finished. It's planished. It's very nice and smooth, as you can see. At least I think you can see on both sides. Like I said, it does have the banana shape to it, but that's okay. That's the next step is taking that out. I don't know if you can see here, see the difference where the form block is? And when I told you a little bit longer, it does little funny things on the end. Well, you can see, without any capturing and any form block, the metal just tries to go wherever the path of least resistance is. So that's why this little funny little end on here. That's going to be ground off because that has to fit the tubing. But I just wanted to show you that. So when you pull it out, just wiggle it a bit. One pin, two pins. And then this is going to, if you hit it right, it's going to be really snug up against the form block. So I'll take just a tiny bit, pop it out of there, and there you go. Form block, undamaged relatively, have a nice clean rib. So the next step is to put some flutes in it and to get some lightning holes.